Hi. In this video we're going to take a quick look at stem and leaf plots and frequency tables. We're going to see what's similar and different about these two ways of collecting data. When using a stem and leaf plot, I take numbers that are similar in size and I break them apart into pieces and display them showing how they have a similar stem but different leaves. So uh, let's take a look. I have a few numbers down the side of the page here. What I'm going to do is always, of course, start with the smallest number. That's where my stem and leaf plot starts. In this case, my smallest number is 103, decimal zero. So what I usually do is, depending on the size of the, stem, of the numbers I have and how close they are for, to each other, that's going to help me choose what my stems and leaves will be. These numbers are all quite close to each other, so I'm going to choose stems that are in the tens column. So in 103, the tens column has a 10 in it. The ones column is what's going to go where my leaf is. So 103 decimal zero. If I had any other numbers that were between 100 and 110, I'd put those leaves there as well, but I don't. That's my only one. I also like to cross them out as I do them to make sure that I don't miss any, because it can be hard when you're making a large list. The next one I'm going to look at is my numbers that are between 110 and 120. So for them, the stem would be 11 tens. 110 has 11 tens. So first I have this number right here, so it's 11 tens and 0 decimal 7. But that's not all. I also have this one here, 112 decimal 4. So I don't have to rewrite anything in the stems column. It's still 11 tens, but I'm going to write 2 decimal 4 for my leaf. Finally, I have to sort of recognize all numbers. Otherwise, it won't be an organized list. I have to consider, do I have any numbers between 120 and 129? I don't, but I still have to put the, tw the 12 tens for 120. And I can see when I look at my leaves that there's nothing there. That helps me see that there's no data in that area. And then finally, I have a 13 for 13 tens, 130, and my leaf is 0 decimal 0. So as you can see, I had four numbers on my chart initially. 1, 2, 3, 4, and I have 1, 2, 3, 4 represented in my table. Frequency tables are a little easier to use because they really just come down to counting numbers. So what I've got over here is I've got some data, and these data, this data stands for times running a race. So these are fictional times for people who are running a race in seconds. And as you can see, there's a lot of similarities, but most of them are in the 12, to 15 or so range. So all I need to do for my frequency table is first find the smallest number on my list. That can be tricky. I really have to look carefully. I'm going to cruise through and I'm going to find that my smallest number is 11 decimal 8. The reason that that's important is because that tells me where my times on my frequency table would start. Because the lowest time is between 11 and 12 seconds, I don't have to go down to say 9 or 10 seconds, and I certainly don't start up higher. So my time between is I'm going to start with 11 to 12 seconds. And as far as I can tell, I have only one. So one student who ran between 11 to 12 seconds. Really important that I cross them out as I go or find a way to take a look at them, because otherwise if I miss any, my data is going to be far off. Now, I'm going to look at my next one, which is obviously going to be times between 12 to 13 seconds. I don't skip any numbers. So let's take a look. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5. Five numbers between 12 to 13. Try and go through a little faster this time, between 13 and 14 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve students ran between thirteen and fourteen seconds. Then I have from fourteen to fifteen. And I have one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen people who ran that much time. Oh, and I gotta squish it down at the bottom because I've got one, two that ran over fifteen seconds. So those who ran fifteen to sixteen seconds, 
there is two of those. I'm always going to want to go through at the end and count up and make sure that the number of students here on my list is equivalent to the numbers in my times. Uh, because if I don't go back and look again and check, I might have missed one. If I do check, then for sure I will catch every single one. And if I happen to miss one, I'll have time to correct that. Okay, so now it's time for you to test yourself. Up in the top corner, there's a set of numbers. I'd like you to take those numbers and place them in the stem and leaf plot. What you need to do is pause the video for a second, do the calculation yourself, and when you come back in a second, you'll see that I've placed everything properly in the stem and leaf plot, and you can check your answer. Good luck! So let's take a look and see how you did. My first stem should be 10 because my lowest number is 100 decimal zero 02 or decimal 2 and that means I have 10 tens. Okay? Then I have to find all the numbers that are between 100 and 110. So first I have 100 decimal 2 and that gives me 0 decimal 2. Then I have 100 decimal 6. That gives me, oops, sorry, 100 decimal 3 and that gives me 3 decimal 1. 100 decimal 6.2, that gives me 6 decimal 2, and 107 decimal 1, that gives me 7 decimal 1 there. Next I'll look at the next one. It, my next stem is obviously 11 because that's what comes next. I only have one number that's between 110 and 120. That's this number and it gives me the stem uh, 11 and the leaf 3 decimal 4. And then finally, I have quite a few numbers between 120 and 130. So my lowest one is 122.6, stem is 12, leaf is 2.6. Next one, 125, stem is 12, leaf is 5.0. And then 129, stem is 12, leaf is 9.0. So as you can see, all my numbers found a place in the stem and leaf plot. What does it do to show me? It shows me that I had a lot of numbers between uh, 100 and 110, quite a few between 120 and 130, and almost none between 110 and 120. Now let's test ourselves using the frequency table. I'm going to ask you again after I pause to come back and take a look. You have the added challenge here of not just placing the numbers, but you also have to write, decide what frequency uh, intervals you want to use for your numbers. What should you use? Intervals of 10, intervals of 5, intervals of 20. Try and decide and see what you think works for you and then come back. So because these numbers are fairly close together but not that close, there's quite a bit of difference between 1.1 and 48.4 for example, I used relatively large frequency uh, uh, intervals of 10. So let's count it down right now and take a look. How many numbers on my list are between 0 and 10? 1, 2, 3. So my frequency for those numbers is 3. How many between 10 and 20? None. None on my list. My frequency is 0. How many between 20 and 30? Just 1. My frequency is 1. How many between 30 and 40? I've got 2 here. So the frequency is 2. And finally, how many between 40 and 50? 2 there. So my frequency is 2. This doesn't show the... Uh, this doesn't show the amount quite as graphically as the stem and leaf plot, but what's really helpful about the uh, frequency table is it sets me up perfectly to make a histogram, which is a type of bar graph that uses intervals instead of just total numbers. So this sort of table is really helpful for me if I want to show my data in another way, in a visual form, using a histogram. Good luck!